It is Friday, July 8th. We've got 110 degree Fahrenheit days up here over the next, what, four or five days, according to the forecast. Still some harvesting going on. In fact, we have our grapes that we've been harvesting for the last week or two. We got a really good harvest off of the Syrah and especially the Zinfandel. The Zinfandel's looking really good. We've tried some different things. We're using organza bags as opposed to bird netting. And so far it's doing pretty good. It is and keeping most of them from birds we're also noticing that with the wine grapes we're not getting the same bird pressure no because there's clusters that we didn't cover and have ripened completely on the vine one of the things that's great about arizona is citrus in fact if you guys watched this weekend's video it's actually about citrus care here in the summertime but we also have kumquats that are kind of year-round right so we got some ripe kumquats you wanted to get a little project done with those kumquats because we haven't really used them well what'd you do I actually harvest a bunch of them and I made some marmalade. Ah, so kind of walk us through. What did you have to do to make the marmalade? So I sliced them up and then I did pull the seeds out of them and I put them in a pot with some sugar and lemon juice and cooked that down. And then I put it in some jars and one of the recipes that I found that I had kind of gone off of I read that they actually, in Europe, they just flip it over and it creates a vacuum seal with the hot, hot mixture inside of it and it seals the jar that way. And you tested them this morning, are they actually sealed? Yes. Oh my goodness. It's kind of funny because laws and regulations and rules and all these things we follow, they vary from nation to nation. Yeah. And you wonder just how much of that is real and how much of it is just scare tactics. <laughs> What you see behind us here is the sorghum area from this year. It's where we had our pigs this past season. We're growing sorghum in here for now, but this it, the destiny for this is actually our turkeys, our fall turkeys that we've already pre-sold actually for Thanksgiving. They're coming here in a couple weeks and we need to be able to get into here. But before we do that, we actually had a project this week that we got done. So we finally got our potted moringa tree planted. We've done a few things differently as far as how we're gonna be doing the irrigation here. The biggest thing is we're not going to have automated irrigation to any of these trees that are gonna flank either side of the turkey pasture that we're gonna be establishing here this season. This tree did go into a little bit of shock here at the beginning of the week, right after planting. It lost most of its leaves, but since then it's already putting on new growth and even seeing some beautiful new flowering right at the top of the tree. It's also maintaining a, a few drumsticks that are on here, so we'll probably get some seeds from this soon as well. Now, some things that you'll notice that we did differently here, I think the biggest thing is our irrigation rings. There are two of them. We have one that's for the younger tree after it's planted near the trunk itself so that we can hand water that close up. And then we also have an outer ring that we dug below grade this time. And the reason for that is we have water that will be actually coming this direction. It's, it flows from the north side of the farm to the south side. So water will actually naturally sheet 
down this entire area behind me here and what will happen is the, each one of these rings will actually capture water and pull it down into the ground about 8 to 10 inches. You'll also notice that we use some smaller logs inside those rings. That's basically so that we slow down the actual breakdown of the material in those rings with the logs versus the wood chips. Because obviously we want to maintain those as long as we can. In addition, it's kind of like hugel culture that's also going to maintain some of our fungus and also bacteria down in and around where this tree is going to be establishing. Most of the trees that we're going to be planting here are actually not going to be transplants. This was a test to see how the transplant itself is going to do. But we're pretty excited to actually have some desert adapted trees and start utilizing some of those permaculture principles in capturing water and utilizing it for trees like this that will give us shade, food, and fodder. We talked a little bit about the fact that we were going to do something a little bit different on this side next to this transplanted Moringa and that's planting Moringa from seed. So if you guys haven't seen a Moringa seed before, they're kind of unique. They have these little sails on them and they're basically almost like a tri-lobe. But we have several seeds that we have saved from our old farm. In fact, we harvested these from our original Moringa tree on the old farm almost exactly four years ago. These seeds are doing fantastic as far as germinating. In fact, we planted seven of these a few weeks back and we had six of the seven actually take. They're now growing underneath some grow lights we have inside the house for transplanting later on. But what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be planting a few of these seeds in each area that we'd have designated on both sides of the turkey pasture so we can get these started here directly in the ground and see which outperforms which, a transplanted tree, a seeded tree, or a small transplanted tree. Two types of transplanted trees. Anyways, you get it. So you saw how we got these planted. So I wanna walk you kind of through this just a little bit. I think it was a couple weeks ago, we actually went ahead and laid down some of the old goat bedding. So it had some hay, some goat manure, and obviously some urine as well. We set these down on the ground and covered it with wood chips. And Lori has been watering this in basically every single day for the last couple of weeks. What we did is we took a little bit of amend. You guys know we're fans of that. You can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. We mix that in with the mixture of hay and manure, as well as a little bit of natural soil. Then we matted that down just a little bit and poked three holes into the ground, which gave us the space to go ahead and plant the seeds into. Then we watered those in nice and heavy and covered them with just a little bit of wood chips to make sure we can help keep a little bit of moisture on these newly planted trees. So we got both sides of the turkey pasture done, but one of the things that we noticed very quickly and we're very excited about is we have mushrooms. And actually, they're all over the place in here where Lori was watering in nice and heavy. Now, a fungal dominated soil is exactly what we're looking for when it comes to these trees, really any trees. And seeing that activity already right here with these newly planted trees is really exciting. So seeing how all of that goat manure did here, I think we need to utilize some of that in a different spot here today as well.
we talked a little bit about the banana that we were gifted. Bob, thank you again. And Matola, thank you for the advice from both of you as far as what we needed and several things in this area for this banana to hopefully survive and thrive. So one of the things we wanted to make sure we were doing was prep the soil. Really excited about how well that bedding works, the goat bedding works for starting those seeds. So I figure it's best to get those down now with a few weeks before we plant that banana and prep this soil. One other thing that you guys saw us planting last week that a few of you asked for an update on, we had actually taken a sweet potato out of one of our garden beds and we had planted it here in this area for ground cover. You can see exactly what happened to all of those vines that I had laid out onto the ground. This was disheartening to see this week, but we figure water it every day. We know there's a potato down there and they do pretty well. And lo and behold, yesterday, this is what Lori found. Really exciting to see that the sweet potato is actually taking off from the potato itself, which is really all we need. So we're gonna keep this nice and moist. You can see we planted a couple more starts there. Now you guys have gave us some great advice as far as what we need to do here at the front to do some wind blocks, but we're not gonna cover that today. So just want to thank you guys for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here as we're establishing this new functioning farm here in the Arizona desert, but would love to see you on a regular basis. Any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere. So can you. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie's gonna get on that thing. <laughs> so, oh, no, no face smacking today. That's all I ask. <laughs> you can lightly brush. Okay. No smacking. Okay. So these seeds, believe it or not, are doing fantastic as far as uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Germinating. Thank you. 